Paris, city of contrasts, but preeminently a center of fashion. In the great house of Revillon, sophisticated models display the trend in furs. Occasionally, the girls group together. Monotony is relieved in low-voiced conversation. What is their talk about? Is it of the ceremony of the Louvre Museum, where Ingrid Bergman is hailed as France's best foreign interpreter, where Jean Cocteau, the Noel Coward of France, presents her with a model of the victory of Samothrace? Is it talk of the glittering reception at the Elysee Palace, where the world's leading political figures meet for a brief hour to smile and chat on commonplace affairs? Where the warmth of the occasion thaws into sudden geniality the somber figure of Mr. Vyshinsky? No, the model's talk is in a lower key. For like the rest of Paris, they're stranded by another transport strike. With the tubes immobilized and without bus services, Parisians face another day of finding new ways to cross their city. Walking, hitchhiking, cycling, or packed like cattle into open lorries, their plight is an outward reflection of the tragic political position in which France finds herself today. Exploiting the situation for personal ambition, or moving forward as its saviour in a spirit of pure patriotism, is General de Gaulle. Crowds throng his path on every speaking tour. Vast numbers pin their hopes upon him, but millions of French left-wingers fear him as a possible dictator. Millions more want what de Gaulle stands for, a stable government, but without de Gaulle.